Chris Cook will joining us now from Leeds is Labour's Richard Bergen, a member of Jeremy Corbyn's shadow cabinet. Uh, good evening, Richard Bergen. Good evening, Kirsty. How are you doing? Uh, first of all, what proportion of GDP will the total tax take be by the end of the Parliament based on the manifesto today? Well, first of all, what I'd say is your uh, colleague, Chris, was right in saying that we should be talking about the bigger picture. This document I've got here uh, that you referred to in your package sets out exactly the total cost, £48.6 yes, billion pounds of our absolutely. spending, and exactly but, but, but we how we will picture. raise it. We know about the big Do picture, we? but Let's we want talk to talk about, about some then. specifics. We want to talk about some specifics. I wonder if you know what proportion of GDP the, to the total tax take will be uh, based on the manifesto today. What proportion will that be? Well, I think what we need to talk about here is yes. as your, yes. if you let me finish, if that's okay. Well, I'm asking a question to which you don't appear me. to I, have I, the reply. I, I understand, I understand uh, your technique. It seems to me that we are being put on trial uh, for daring to suggest higher public spending, put on trial for daring to set out with greater transparency than any other party has put forward before about how much we're going to spend and how we're going to spend it. You, I presume, have read the document and it's all in there. Yeah. We've got a choice with this interview. But we can either do the rather tedious thing of going through each number that's hang in on, this document, or we can talk about, or, or we can talk about the bigger picture. We, we can talk about, well, for we example, going, we, are we can going talk to go about, through, for let example, me reassure you, let me reassure you, we are going to go through some of the specific policies in a minute. I just wonder if you had any idea what proportion of GDP the total tax take will be at the end of this parliament. Just to tell you, in case you don't know, it's going to be 36 percent. Do you know relatively how high that is from any other government since the war? Well, the key point is this. When it comes to it, we made a pledge on tax that I think your viewers were very interested in, that 95 percent of people, i.e. everyone who gets paid less than £80,000, won't pay a single penny more uh, in uh, but, taxation because Labour is the party of low tax for the many. The Conservatives, sadly, in the last seven years have proven themselves to be the uh, the party of low tax only for right, the well, let's privileged do, few. Let's, let's look at let's look at that. Just just to just to tell you that there hasn't been such a high tax take in the in, in as a proportion of GDP since 1949. So that that is that is pretty eye catching. Another eye catching announcement today in the manifesto was that you're going to introduce an excessive pay levy on salaries above 330,000, another one at half a million. Why call it excessive? Is that a moral judgment? Well, I do think that the levels of inequality in this society are very great. The average earnings in the constituency I represent are 18 thousand uh, pounds and I think it's right that Labour's saying there'll be no secret tax rises or sneaky tax ruses but 95 percent of people won't pay an extra penny of tax remember that the Conservatives promised that there'd be no yeah. national insurance increase and it was only Labour stopping them doing that through the back door that stopped them uh, doing it on so, the slide. So this isn't just this basically what excessive means is you know unnecessary too high so basically you believe that people earning over 330,000, be they entrepreneurs, uh, be they computer wizards, be they CEOs, TV are actually essentially, anybody. could be, are actually earning too much. You think they're earning too much. Well, why can't we talk about in these interviews the many, not the few? Your question so far is focused on the few, about people that earn over £300,000. That's about 0.3% of society. Let's expand this conversation and talk about the 95%. Well, let's talk about that. Well, let's, mo let's move on to one of your other major uh, announcements today. And, and that is on scrapping tuition fees. Now, you'll understand that people can be quite sceptical when it comes to people saying there'll be no tuition fees. But Thanks you've said that you'll, yeah. Yeah, you'll say that you'll scrap them. So when would a Labour government scrap them? Would a student starting this September not pay tuition fees? Well, I think that you saw how enthusiastically uh, this uh, policy was received by students today and across the country. But they want it to be delivered. And if it was delivered by a Labour government, would it be delivered immediately? Would it be incremental? Would students that are actually at university now in second year not pay, when would you be introducing this policy? Well, we'll reveal the further details of our plans in due course over the next three weeks. But I think what is true is that 
It's but been widely welcomed. And the difference between Jeremy Corbyn and people like Nick Clegg, if anybody remembers him, is that Jeremy Corbyn is a politician who's always kept his promises and so kept by his just word. Said, you just said, and that's absolutely clear, there will no more detail in three weeks. So we will know the detail of tuition fees and how they're going to be scrapped within three we'll weeks. We'll be making further announcements about the details but, of our policy. So but it seems, it seems to me here that we are being put on trial for uh, agreeing to more You're uh, announcing public policy. investments. You're announcing and policy. It, and we've announced a great uh, list of policies today. Of which this that, is one. That of which is a key one that, and of which you're spending a lot of money on. Just, let's just, and we make no apologies for spending okay. a lot of money uh, on it because it's fully costed and right. it will stop students and people who want to be students from being held back. So There's too many it, people if, and families held back in this country okay, and this manifesto will change that. It's about fairness and I absolutely see that you'll be absolutely categoric about that. Would you suggest then, uh, if you announce in three weeks time that you can't um, abolish tuition fees for say two years if a Labour government gets in, would you suggest that students delay going to university until your um, policy is in place? Well, I mean, obviously, this is yes. some kind of trap. At the end of the day, I hope you would join students across the country and people who are thinking about being students welcoming this policy right. as a massive step forward. And it is a massive step forward, just as is uh, ending the scrapping or reversing the scrapping of the student nurse bursaries, bringing back the education maintenance uh, allowance. What this is about is, uh, is, is stopping people's aspirations from being held back. People feel they're being priced out of going to university. A Labour government will end that. And as right. I say, the what difference I, is the difference is between Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour team and, for example, the Liberal Democrats, who you mentioned earlier, is that uh, the, um, the, the Labour team and Jeremy Corbyn have a track record of keeping the word. You're, going to, the you're, you're, you're introducing sweeping changes in childcare. Uh, you're going to say there's, yeah, there's free school meals. There'll be uh, no tuition fees. These essentially are free benefits for the very people that you say earn £330,000 and excess. They're going to benefit from that. That actually is a terrible inconsistency, isn't it? We all benefit from that. We all benefit from people going to university. Their education helps to stimulate the economy. If you're treated in hospital, you're treated by someone that's gone to university, whether it be uh, a doctor uh, or a nurse. Uh, if you go and see a lawyer, you're being uh, assisted by somebody uh, who's been to university. And for example, our policy of free school meals, some people have criticised it for its universalism. I'm proud of its universalism. Well, uh, cause, cause on that question of universalism, on that question of universalism and whether that's going to benefit you, Len McCluskey, the secretary of Unite, told Political that if the party holds 200 seats, that will mean this has been a successful campaign. Is he one of the so-called uh, moderate doom mongers? Well, Len McCluskey is a great General Secretary and I'm delighted that he was uh, re-elected uh, recently. But all I'm focusing on and all the Labour team is focusing on is getting out these policies, policies for the many, but not the few. But is he right about that, that it would be a successful campaign if you take 200 seats? Well, the polls have narrowed. Uh, we hope they'll continue to narrow. I believe they will when people consider the policies in these manifesto. And we want to win this general election. They say a week's a long time in politics. There's three weeks to go. Three weeks is an even longer time in the politics. We're right. up for the fight and we're up to winning this election in order to completely transform things. So things are run in the interest of the many, not the few. Thank you and very so we much, end Steve. the system being rigged against people and families. Thank you very much, Richard Bergen. Thank you.